Hi, I'm Stuart of LeaseSpec and welcome back to the R34 GTR track car project. Today I'm going to be working mainly in the engine bay and what I'm approaching right now is, as, as you can see, we've got a new core support fitted. The bottom is missing. I'll go into further detail why. Uh, you'll also notice that it's on the chassis table. That's because we're going to be doing some welding on the frame rail legs and I wanted this area to be as relaxed as possible for the lower chin bar that we're making. And I'll also take you through some of the spot welding, some of the firewall shaving that we're going to be doing on this car as well. To get started, what, what we originally had was a OEM core support. It was dented real bad in here on the top. And I found that the lower chin bar was pretty rusty. We had this new core support available from the beginning of the project. Me and the customer decided, let's go ahead and swap it out. We started swapping it out and then I realized that this is a great opportunity to take advantage of creating some custom room for the radiator. Uh, what, that, what I mean by that is that typically the radiator and the front of the RB26, especially an R34 configuration, isn't very lenient towards a larger fan. And ideally what I'd like is I'd like for this car to be able to come in to the pits from, from running hard or whatever else, regardless of temperature, and just to be able to sit there and hold idle. Getting the car to run cool while it's driving is one thing. Getting an RB to sit there and idle after pounding the crap out of it for 15 laps in a row is a different beast entirely. So I'm going to place a lot of emphasis on two things. One, making sure that we get as efficient of a radiator as possible. And two, maximizing the room that I do have. This kind of looks incomplete, but I'll show you some of my thought process and how this assembles together later on in the video. But what this setup allowed me to do is it allowed me to push the radiator forward and it's actually gonna sit kind of underneath the core support. I'm gonna make that a little bit easier because I'm actually about to modify this core support in this video. I'm going to take the upper part of it off, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to uh, make a replacement removable piece. So by the time I'm done with the car, the chin bar will be removable as well as the upper core support. So now we have a car where engine serviceability and just basically full on engine bay access is, is very, very easy for the end user. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started by setting the upper core support. I'm gonna finish some of my cuts. I've made some rough cuts here just to get rid of the, the lower tie bar and the chin bar. I'm gonna make this look a lot more appropriate the way that I have it. I'm gonna set it in place and lock it down with the with an alignment that I like, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting the top. I'm gonna to go ahead and preface this again. I'm not a body guy. Uh, I'm not a panel beater. I don't do any of this by trade. Core support is quite a bit easier than what you guys saw in the last video with the, the quarter panels, but still, this is a skill set that I'm kind of learning at. So uh, if you see something that you aren't a huge fan of, I am all ears. I'm always open to suggestions, comments, or anything along those lines. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started and let's get to shaving the core support so that all of this looks correct. All right, so now that I've got it cut down and clamped back in place where I like the location, I've got it kind of solidified a little bit, it's time to take a look at and examine what it is that we're going to be keeping on the car. We know that the radiator isn't gonna be in the stock position, so we don't need the studded posts. We know that there is no condenser, so we don't need condenser mounts. We don't need anything for wiring pass-throughs. We don't need anything for hood latch or anything along those lines. So essentially, we had a couple of options. We could sit here and we could smooth this upper bar and uh, get rid of a lot of this stuff as we've kind of done elsewhere in the engine bay, or we could kill two birds with one stone, make this removable for engine serviceability and get rid of a lot of this, uh, I guess, extracurricular stuff. So we're gonna go with the latter of the two and I'm gonna go ahead and make some cut points and get rid of this.
Yeah, I think I like that. Perfect. Okay, so it's a rough cut, but currently I like the piece and I like where it sits and I like the size and I like the proportions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make brackets that sit underneath the core support on the top and the face so that it catches it at two angles for a little bit of added strength. And at the end of everything, this is gonna end up being a piece that can unbolt and bolt on for basically quick access to the front of the engine and to kind of, uh, hurry along the uh, the maintenance process of the car should it ever need work in the future or anything like that. So I'll go ahead and uh, start on these brackets and we'll get this thing bolted up and final sized. And this is the finished piece in place. Uh, it still needs some kind of uh, adjusting around. What I've done is I've made a little connecting piece and I've clear coated onto the core support here and here because this is probably where I'm gonna spot weld. Probably put another one right there and then same. I'll just do a couple spot welds on the top and a spot weld here and then uh, dress that up so that it looks a little bit more complete. I will cut this top panel as soon as I know what size, the f what the final size of the radiator is. I would actually love it if this had a little bit of a bend down, but right now what I'm aiming at is I'm aiming for optimal radiator height. So in essence, no lower than the chin bar. And right now I can kind of get it all the way up into the top of the bottom of this temporary core support piece so that we can get a little bit of extra height out of it without potentially pushing it down further in the chassis. Anyways, that's the plan. That's the hope. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this. I'm gonna leave this excess, and depending on the radiator, I'll either cut it, or if the radiator's a little bit shorter than I'm anticipating, I'll fold it down so that it kind of matches the contour of the old core support and gives it just a little bit more strength back. Right now, I think it'll be fine with these two bends, but just in case, it could never hurt to have a little bit more strength. A uh, little more is obviously better than not enough. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take off this lower chin bar and I'm gonna finish some of the TIG welding. I've began some of the TIG welding on the car, and I did that so that it could heat up and relax while it was being held in place, and it's triangulated on the bottom as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld all of the triangulated faces so that I can call this done, and then at the end of the video, I'll show you what these rings are. This was actually something that I came up with to uh, replace the, the intercooler uh, mounting bracket system. Originally, these actually went into the ends of the frame rail, like so, and obviously there was a further bracket, and then the factory cups sat in like this with the recirculation brackets and everything else on it. So, actually, I'm sorry, I have this, the wrong side one. Anyways, just imagine it's reverse. It was like that. So, <clears throat> now, these actually just sit and locate directly into these steel plate uh, these steel plates that I kind of cut and fashioned and put into place. So 
I did this with a, a couple of things in mind. I, I made sure to optimize how close the front mount was to the bumper so that there was no trimming required. Also so that we can get maximum distance between the radiator and the front mount. And then I set this at the right height so that ducting was very easy to, to place on top of here and use it as a mounting point. Anyways, it's all kind of intricate and I have it all thought out in my head. I'm gonna sound like an idiot just sitting here explaining it nonstop. So uh, let me go ahead and stop myself there. I'm gonna take this off and finish welding it and I'll kind of show you guys what I did to the frame rail to strengthen it up to accept this support structure. So you've seen the footage of me welding together this piece, and uh, I'd like to kind of walk you through exactly what it is. It's a, I say multi-purpose, actually it's only two purposes, but uh, what it is is essentially it's the new lower tie bar for the core support. From the factory, this is just a stamped steel piece, and I didn't try to put uh, too much metal as far as weight is concerned to replace it but I tried to make it a little bit stronger. And I also tried to relocate exactly where the bar sat to give me all the advantages of the radiator that I have explained before. Now, in order to install it, what I chose to do was I actually did a, a series of, I guess I did a few fabrication items to strengthen the end of the frame rail. The first thing I did was I inserted tubing that would accept an M8 bolt and then I, I welded it, or rather, I ran it through, I welded it here, and then I, I ground it as flush as I could. And then on the other side, I added a plate, in, instead of just uh, welding it to the frame rail, so that it kind of distributed some of the, the, the strength of the bolt and the nut, I actually just welded a full plate. And uh, you can see I welded the tubes here and then ground them flush. <clears throat> in addition to stop any sort of distortion or crushing of the frame rail, I went ahead and just capped the ends of them. Uh, just pretty standard routine stuff, nothing too crazy. Whereas over here, you can't really tell. All right, so what I do, I, I kind of just like putting marks where I space my, uh, space my spot welds out about every inch, give or take. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay those in now and keep moving along with this process. That's the remainder of the spot welding done, or stitch welding, spot welding, whatever you want to call it. Um, I will go ahead and show you an example of how the front end reassembles, namely because I want to make sure that everything is aligned so that I can finalize this panel, but also to kind of show you how these, how these holders work and uh, what the front end looks like because all the carbon fiber stuff is actually pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get it on the car and uh, give you an idea of what the finished product is going to be closer to looking like.
All right, and that's the front end all complete. Uh, I didn't move it much, but as you could see, I made it a point to push the front mount as close to the front bumper as possible so that we don't get any sort of escaping air around. What we're looking for is we're looking to just channel every single thing that goes into this bumper mouth through the fins of the front mount, through the grill, and directly into the radiator. So once we're further along in the project, I'll definitely be making a full ducting setup for this car uh, just to make sure that there's no wasted air. And if you take a glimpse now behind the, uh, behind the front mount, now you can kind of get an idea of what, what space I've opened up and allotted for for the new radiator. And hopefully this ends up in tremendous cooling capa capacity and capabilities. So we'll see how everything goes. Uh, that about wraps up this episode for the GTR. I'll still keep everything going. We still have some work on the firewall. We still have some work on the pedal box. And I get, I'll be honest, we still have a work, a lot of work kind of everywhere, but we're moving along. I'll do my best to document. I'll do my best to keep you guys up to date. There's another 34 in the shop right now. Um, kind of weird to say there are four R34s in here, but this one is in for some titanium work. So keep your eyes open. I will be doing titanium downpipe on that car, upper titanium hot pipe, uh, the merge, as well as titanium intakes for a group M carbon fiber intake. It is going to be a lot. It's one of my more favorite customer cars. I think it's very, very nice and very well put together and it's an honor to get to work on it. So. Anyways, I'll keep you guys up to date. Thank you very much for watching and keeping up with everything. Take it easy.